thing I'm going to be using, or not me, but you guys, is thermal imaging. So, oh, I can do that one. <laughs> why would we want thermal imaging instead of a ghost hunt? How energy? Which which kind? Not heat, but cold. We're looking for cold spots, guys. So literally, this is the real deal. This is a FLIR camera. This is what firemen use to actually help save people. So again, yeah, this one is is really cool and easy to use. Yes, exactly. Now we have a jokester, by the way. I I I'm, I came prepared. So now with that said, you guys should be able to see me in there, right? The red, orange, and yellow guy. All right. Do you remember why I'm the red, orange, and yellow guy? Because I'm the hottest thing inside the camera right now, ladies. Yes, that works out. Yeah. So it's not even a bridal party. This is cool. Um, so with that, what are we looking for? Blue and black. So blue and black spots are going to be our coldest areas inside the frame. So what, what are we looking for? For them to either take shape or to move on their own. So again, the blue and black, we're going to be, I'll be spot checking this. We're going to be recording through most of the night. The way this is actually set up, there's a blue dot bouncing around the screen. The blue dot is going to help you find the coldest spot in the frame at that particular moment. So when you're watching your video, it's just helping to guide your eye. I don't always stare at that, but we're always looking for at least 15 degree temperature drops. So with that one said, Ari, I think that this one's going to go to you because I want your commentary on there. So he, they, he didn't have that cool camera last time. You're always nope. going to keep it horizontal Smoke. and the camera will always be on your left. So just kind of keep that in mind. We're going to do a few starts and stops, as you know, because the, the hardware is great, software sucks. <laughs> Yeah, but that's where all the money is. Yeah. Let's go to the next crazy camera. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's see. You get what, like, you see how it's just a little... No, but you got a 15% degree difference on the inside of the window, which is great. Yeah. No, it's working. All right. The next crazy one. See? You guys should not be able to see me in this tiny little GoPro right there. It's pretty dark, pretty black. I know there's no light back there, and it's not that exciting to show you a black screen. But turn on some lights. See, this is all the stuff we should buy. So, with that said, it should be entirely purple at this point. Yeah. Now, the cool thing about this camera is we're using lights you can't see with your naked eye. We're using infrared lighting. And actually, I upgraded this since last time you guys were on. This actually has 24 lights on it instead of oh. the normal eight that we were using before. So, the whole Getting point of this camera extra. is that we're going to be able to find things we normally would not be able to see with our own eyes. We're also going to be using an accompanying item to go along with this, so that way we can detect motion. So, with that said, you guys seem like you're super stoked about this. So, Annie, I think I'm going to go with you on this one. Yay! So, I'm going to start to record on this one, just to make sure we're going to be able to... I like to how happy she is. <laughs> I am. <laughs> so, it's already recording. You and I will... I'll show you how to start the stops on that one we're ready for. But I want to get this thing recording just so we can actually make it keep going. Uh, let's see, let's see. Ooh. Let's get the, the accompanying item out of the way. So that I wow. Missed that. Gotcha. Yeah, get behind me. What is making you sit down and do nothing? Alright, so this is the neuralizer from Men in Black. Yes, that joke still works, everybody. So, none of you are going to remember anything by the time we're done. We're working with lasers here. Lasers, the whole point of lasers oh. is that you say you can't see the lasers until something passes through it. The camera I just handed over to Annie, actually, this thing lights up like a Christmas tree over there. So, She's going to have a person from her party basically help bring out to detect any kind of motion. In the event something passes through it, I'm going to give you the still from it, and we'll kind of see what actually it is. There's going to be two different types of lasers. The, la the second one is actually going to give us red squares. The red squares, in the event something passes through it here, I can take that still from the camera, put it in 3D software, and give you a full 3D view of what we caught along with measurements. So I've had this guy for about a year now. Hasn't been able to, the software hasn't been able to take the blurry photos we've had yet, but hopefully tonight is our night. So. Nikki, you're going to get both lasers. When you're using these, you want to make sure it's always touching your toe unless I direct you otherwise. This one has a toggle switch, so once it's on, it's on. You have to be careful how you move it. There is a laser law in Charleston. Don't get me arrested. Perfect. No pressure. <laughs> we'll take care if you get arrested. Don't worry about it. <laughs> little phone call fixes everything. Okay. I got very simple items. Yeah, no, that's okay. Okay. I can handle that. I'll take a simple one. <laughs> I need to make sure I don't fall. They were actually pretty fun. I enjoyed the little audio thing. It was easy. Okay. I set up everything so you really don't have to do much. It's okay. really the way I have everything set up. So, spirit boxes. We're going to be using several different types of spirit boxes tonight. 
Spirit boxes are a way for us to communicate with the dead. So if you're unfamiliar with the spirit boxes, because you don't watch the TV shows or YouTube videos, in a nutshell, this is the white noise that you would normally hear on television. And then your host is going to tell you what he thinks he heard in the middle of it. We're going to do this a little bit differently because capturing disembodied voices like they do on TV doesn't actually happen 12 per episode. I get about four or six of those per year. So again, very small amount versus what you guys are capturing or hearing on your TV shows. So I have these slowed down on purpose for the specific reason of the radio chatter allowing to come through. So the person listening to this is going to have an earbud in. Whatever the spirit, like the song lyrics, the commercials, the DJs, whatever comes through, it's a 50-50 shot. If we can make it out, it's tied to our location, a person in history we're discussing, or even something going on with one of you guys. Yeah. It happens all the time. Yeah. So again, it, it, it definitely happens all the that time. That one hit us last time. Yeah. Now, this is the one you guys had last time. Yep. Um, so, with this one, uh, <coughs> it's recording. Morning, even though the person wearing it now is going to have an earbud in. That's the recording is going to go to everybody, and I'm going to spot check this guy for 15 to 25 more markers based on whatever I find in there. If it's relevant, I will always give you a link to be able to verify the information. Again, I'm not hiding anything here. Everything is based off of fact. So, you look a little scared, which is exactly what I'm going to give it to you. So, she's the, you're like timid a little bit, that's all. Um, ear, I'm earwax. afraid I might hear something. Okay, oh, that's what we want. Earwax is gross. You get to keep those. I don't want them. So, you do your twist tie, your volume button is the wheel at the top. So, that one goes to you. Uh, let's see. Huh? You think so? It's that space for that building. Oh, yeah, but it's yeah, yeah. these links, see? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Good call. Well, let's see. See if it changes. Yeah. Yeah. This guy's going to give us words from time to time in the center of the screen. So, in a nutshell, this is going to replace the obvious that you would normally see on your TV show. The last story I did, which would have been three rainy days ago, three rainy there was actually 77 turns that actually popped up. 92. 92 is what you're going with today? Yep. Now, Ari actually guessed the exact amount that we got on his specific tour the last time he was with me. The exact number. And it was 103, which is an excessive amount for a two hour time frame. So, He's going to go with 92. Um, so here's how this guy works. He's scanning through the radio stations the same way of the one that I just handed over. So it is also looking for recognizable terms to put on the screen. This is a phone app. 80% of this is going to be garbage. I'm just going to put it out there right away. The other 15, 5 to 20% is going to be relevant for a location, a person in history, something going on with one of us. It happens all the time. So this way, um, we're going to get the whole list, and I'm going to send you the whole list. Again, if it's relevant, I'm going to give you the link to be able to show you that it's relevant. So with that said, I'm not going to stand up to you. You don't have to do anything. I will come to you when I want to see the list. Nice and easy, right? I don't know. I don't know. This one, this is the brand new device. I've had this less than a month. Um, and it's only been on the paranormal market for less than, we'll say, three months. Um, so yeah, this one's going to go to you guys. So what is this guy? It's another type of spirit box, but basically it's running through the alphabet. And hopefully the any EMF spikes are going to make it stop on letters. In a nutshell, it is a digital Ouija board. So it's going to save the letters to the bottom row. Now with that said, it's going to erase those letters. So I'll have to keep checking in with this person. Now has this thing been super active for me just yet? Not necessarily. I've been using it less than a month. So again, hopefully we get some initials, an anagram, a full word. We never know what's actually going to pop out of this guy. So, Andrew, I think this one's actually going to go to you, my friend. You look very oh, stoked. Happy fucking birthday. Sure. <laughs> I can answer if it's, it's, if it's Dick's birthday as well. So, this guy, the next spirit box. This guy is going to scan through both the FM and AM radio stations simultaneously. And hopefully, it's going to eliminate any white noise that's coming through the Red Spirit box that's recording and only give us words. You get about 10 to 12 turns out of this guy per night, and it's about 75% accurate. So, the hope here is that we're going to be able to capture quite a few words out of this guy. Um, so, with this one, I'm actually going to hand this one off to you, so that way all three of you can listen. And it doesn't record, so try to stick close to Annie, so that way, in case you miss something, it'll be on the audio recording of the actual camera. So again, the only thing you need to worry about is how to hold it. Your speaker's down here. This is where you're gonna listen from. The blinking lights are the top. On the right is the only button, it's the mute button. It's on mute now because we're gonna be passing ponies soon. 
I don't want to disturb any horses. So again, we're going to leave it on mute. I'll let you know when it's safe to unmute. Johns. You guys just all had a drink or sat there for dinner or what have you, where most of you just came from. Um, so, Big John's was named after a football player. It was his bar. His name was Big John Kennedy. Now you know why they named it Big John's. He played for the 1947 New York Giants. Whenever I'm giving you the history of a building or a location, I will always slow down on specific keywords. The keywords here are going to be 47, New York, Giants, and anything relative to a bar in the name John. Wow, it got really loud on this corner all of a sudden, didn't it? Right. I know, right? So, with that said, here's why the place is hot. Big John used to sit in the back of the bar. going on, he slammed down his beer, and went over and just started beating the hell out of these guys. I mean, just pounding them to the floor. A couple of gunshots went off. John got grazed in the neck, but the bullet landed behind him in the wall. So, John, being the only one that's been shot, gets up, goes back to the bar, and tells the bartender to get him another beer, get the two guys on the floor, and ambulance. Now, normally if I tell you a building is haunted, you think of some tragic death. That's not the case here. What's going on is the bullet hole is allegedly still here. Even if Big John Big John's blood is now sealed inside the building. People that sit in the front of the bar tend to get a little crazy, nauseous, or headache. Part of the reason why we start here. This is kind of a heated warning. If anybody feels any of those symptoms, I'll need to know immediately. We're going to blame the heat and humidity first. Oh, wait, not everything will be paranormal. Did you guys eat? Oh, no, you guys just had a drink. How was he before you went in?
I don't have any proof of this story. It's just a great segue, so nobody thinks about getting sick on the story, even though I just brought it back up again. Donald, so focus on the rotating numbers. Oh, I'm sorry. I told you I was going to get somebody next time. Thank you for correcting me. All right. Is everybody ready to go ghost hunting? Yeah. All right. We're going to go this way. Let's do it. Automatically, what? I don't know. Ask, ask Captain Nick. Lasers do set off car alarms. Uh, uh, the red uh, laser is on. That's what I always think of. <laughs> Nick, you no, got some black spots I've read behind you. Yeah. Black spots behind me? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Between the two of you. Been sitting there for a few minutes. Let me know when they start moving. Right between me and you. I just showed him. I know there's some people in the store. So let's say Helen's word list has the word art on it. Oh. That doesn't mean anything to us, specifically to this location. But then I'm going to use Katie to, again. Let's put it um, somewhere so else. Let's say Katie carries the number 40 on her spirit. Together, our fair well, box was number 40 on Big John's team. 
Does that make sense to everybody as to how we're going to be piecing all of these clues together and the weird things we're going to be hearing? You know, you, you people with the, the spirit boxes with the radio stations, it's going to be the weirdest, silliest thing that you're not going to think this mean anything. But if you hear Drop It Like It's Hot, or if you hear <laughs> Welcome to Charleston, these are the things I want to know. If you hear Drop It Like It's Hot, it could mean that there was a fire in the location of where we're standing. But again, I'm looking for that secondary verifier to be able to verify what's actually going on. Does that make sense to everybody? So again, not all of you are going to know everything that's going to be happening. Um, let's talk about the camera. So Ari, first thing, uh, two things for you. Try to keep one of us in view. Um, again, we're going to be the warmest thing out here, so that's why I make the joke at the beginning, so you remember that. Um, and that kind of gives you that array of color. Uh, and as far as both cameras go, uh, we do not want to be filming people's vehicles and or people's residences. So I'll always give you the cues of when we're going to be in spaces like this. You don't want to focus on somebody's car for too long. Um, the other thing you're going to try to do, keep the sky out. The sky, if you, were, if you remember, actually doesn't have a surface on it. So that blue dot is going to default to the sky. So when you guys are watching your video, it's some places that's going to be impossible for Ari, so kind of give him a break. So if it does default to the sky, at that point, we'll be looking for the blue and black spots to either start taking shape or moving on their own. Now, Annie, yeah. let's get those lasers out. So, take your ears out the point where you're actually going to point one at the ground for us. Not at the sky. You don't want to be falling down planes. So, <laughs> let's give the lasers to their own people. So, a laser, you're actually in a perfect spot. I normally tell people you want to be about two to five feet away, looking for something in here, not on the ground. You're only pointing the camera down at it because we already know what the green dots look like. So, if you're going to use them together, use them side by side. Across the streams, Ghostbuster joke, everybody. You're making one <laughs> giant grid, so therefore it's pointless. So this way we actually have two Don't cross streams. So the slower you, the two of you move in unison together, the much easier it will be to actually find an anomaly. All right, and lasers are not always going to be in a safe space, so just so you have that idea, that's why I kind of like, oh, where's the red laser? Um, but that's part of the reason why I gave you guys the open air spirit box, so that way, you know, when you guys are out of commission, you can all listen to the open air spirit box to see what you guys are actually capturing. So, you guys ready to get away from football players and helmets? I know I am. Yeah. All right, let's go learn some history. Let's do this. Yeah. How's your word list come? Well, I don't know if it's related to Thunderbed, which is a little weird. <laughs> How many are there? There was two Hey Andrew, if you want to leave your hat, if it's getting too hot, you can leave it in the car. That way Nick feels, you know, unique. <laughs> Oh, 2.4. That just went to 2.4 from yeah. zero, but... 2.5 and higher is what I'll start recording. Okay. So right. we'll talk more about that. All right, so welcome to your first space. Let's circle up a little bit because i got to give you some history here. This is where we actually get started. So you can pull your lasers because your arms are probably going to get tired as I separate you guys out a little bit. All right, so welcome to your uh, basically your first location, everybody. You're welcome to a parking lot. Congratulations, you made it. So... <laughs> What is this place? This used to be the Eliza and Charles Pinckney Mansion. Their mansion sat in the front of this space, facing East Bay Street. Eliza's garden was lined up with the Five Creek Restaurant that came all the way across. It's basically lined up with that little cement tower there. But we're saying it, this is the servant who played quarters for the home. I would like to give you a bit basic layout of the land before we actually started with the history. The first off is spirit boxes. I am not going to be giving you questions like what color is George Washington's white horse from what we did over there with the red barn. <laughs> you will be getting the answers from your spirit boxes, and yes, it's yeah. going to withhold information on purpose. So that way everybody has a genuine experience. I try to put at least one communication device within every group, and I think I did that successfully tonight, so we're good. Alright, so who the heck were these people? Charles and Eliza had a company Charles and had a company Charles. That's three Charles is. You see why I can look for the secondary clue at this point? Because I need to know which company. Eliza. She has a 
and West Hollywood story and signed the pieces of paper. Eliza, she married Charles at a young age according to today's standards. If we're going to ask her how old she was when she got married, it will not be according to the earlier times that she came from. In other words, you're not going to hear answers like 12 and 14. You're going to hear numbers according to today's standards. The reason I bring this up, her husband Charles, over doubled her age when they married. A creepy age gap in 20 times, definitely a creepy age gap in half. bring all of his children home one last time so he could see them. Eliza didn't believe he was dying. Instead, she starts, well, she gets married you know, in 1744. You don't get married in 1744 for a green card. And she actually fell in love with her. So it was that piece. But she also wanted to prove her father that she's staying put. She's not going to go all the way home for an illness that she didn't believe that was going to kill her. And she was right. Her father did not die right away. Instead, he starts sending her gifts from England to this base. One of those gifts happened to be the plant seeds of Indigo. You guys have been in town for at least an hour or two that I know of, or you live here. You've seen the word indigo somewhere. Indigo is a plant that makes blue dye that makes our blue beans blue. Several of you are wearing it tonight, because that's how we still use it. So, when she got these seeds, she didn't know what to do with them. She had to learn from her slaves how to keep it cultivated. So, once she figured it out and experimented with it here, she moved it to another plantation just south of here, called her father up, not really, because it's the 1700s, and said, hey, Dad, rice plantations are going downhill. We can make a killing with this indigo. And now we have an international businesswoman during colonial times. Something absolutely unheard of. So, you ought to see me during like Women's History Month in the month of March. Yeah, I'm a big hit. Just so you know, we're gonna talk about a lot of like famous females tonight. Now, with that said, here's getting that's her business. You guys are all here for the weird stuff, so let's get into the weird stuff. Everybody has some type of spirit box. Um, as far as yours, Andrew, I want you to pick up on whatever other because I don't have a set of questions designed for yours yet. So, and I don't have any common answers. So let's go through the common answers of things I normally get. So with yours, with the word list, as far as that one goes, Eliza was the second wife named Eliza from Charles, back to back. Either kind of a creepy move or a really smart move, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> His first wife, Eliza, died in January of 1744. The one we just spoke of, he married in May of 1744, five months later. So both Elizas have a maiden name that starts with the letter L. Figure out which Eliza we're dealing with by asking for the maiden name. You can also go with the questions of how old they were when they got married to see if you get any kind of answers out of it. Isabel, your device. I want you going after the children. As far as that goes, I want you to ask how many children and what their names were. Try not to poke any other questions with this one because there's a tragedy among those kids. If we poke the bear, we all know it's going to be you. But again, all activity will stop, including the small EMF hits that we've been getting so far. Um, and as far as, like, you have an extra earbud. Mm. If she wants to help you out, give her the extra earbud so that way you two of you can actually listen together and you'll know where to stop based on any blinky lights you're going to see in the space. As far as your spare box, yours. The mansion's not here anymore. Yours usually gives us one to two syllable answers, so we're going to keep yours nice and simple. With the mansion not being here, find out what happened to it and when did that happen. So that's going to be your major focus. Uh, let's see. You don't have a spare box. I'm sorry, I was looking at devices and I seen the black box. So, last questions, anybody that wants to reach out for them would be relative to Eliza's death. So that would be how old she was when she died, what she died from, where she's buried, and which president was a pallbearer at her funeral. Again, we're going to be staying within the confines of this space. Uh, we're not going to be going in between vehicles, and for those of you with cameras, we do not film vehicles for long periods of time, just keep on moving. So, I'm going to be bouncing around with everybody, but I have to work with April first to show her how to use the motion sensor part of her device. So, I'll be bouncing around writing notes down from everybody, but start asking those questions in whatever fashion that you feel comfortable, whether it's out loud or whether it's focusing on them as a group with whoever who you're, you're working with. As far as lasers, they are safe in here. No cards. They will not cards. So, all right, I'm going to work with April. Everybody else, let's spread out. I'll be with you in just a moment. I really want to mess with them and turn on the and turn on the car alarm right now. Is your car over there? Yeah. So again, we oh, may get. Oh. Do you have an E already? Should I? No. I wouldn't yet. Ego. Ego. He does have EGO. All right. So. Oh. That fits. Got two point four. I might take note of that. Ego. Uh, but let's, let's go ahead and pull up your antenna so you kind of get used to that. Turn the device around to the back where you can see there's a little flap. You're going to lift this flap up and there'll be two little white buttons underneath it. The one on the right is the one you want, so click the one on the right into the device. So it's flat. Perfect. Alright, shut the flap now. Now, when you lock
walk around, this is actually going to go off based on your movements. So again, just based on what I was demoing with it, it's going to be a little weird to kind of get a sense of it. Um, so any of that something goes by, yeah, super bright. Again, whenever your motions make it go off. I'm just going to rent to the bathroom. Oh. Okay. So you're good. You're going to be here like five minutes, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. I would say at least ten. Okay. Um, so every time it goes off, there's a reset button on the right hand side right where your thumb is. There's four buttons. Here. Find the bottom button. Every time it goes off, you're going to click that button and release it. And it'll reset the end of the field so we can get the same color that you just had when you were walking. It's always going to happen. Okay, you get a whole I did not give you guys another spirit box direct since you guys probably remember. Well, yeah. Come here. Come here. It's going nuts. It's, it's, it just it's spilled out jaw. Oh, oh. Not have a device. Jaws. It's, like, it's going crazy. Jaw. It's going crazy. I thought right you said now. this wasn't like crazy well, active before. It's, it's not that it's not crazy active, it just doesn't give me crazy evidence. It spills so out. I can turn up jaws. the sensitivity all, all the way oh. and get a jumble, but there might not be anything there. Got it. Jaws of two S's. Two S's. Still not relevant here. <laughs> nope. I'm gonna start walking. Yeah, still walking around. See what you got going on with that. It's my butt. It's my butt, sorry. That is super sensitive. I do want to check the sensitivity here just to make sure it's not gonna be. Let's see if there's any ghosts standing next to you guys. Nope. All the black around here is either from car windows or. Yeah. And it's all explainable. That's at its lowest sensitivity, so hopefully it's not gonna go. We're not always going to be able to use that run block because it might be relevant or if you remember like walking on the streets, it's pointless because of the parking meters. That's yeah. true. So, all right, let me start bouncing around, see what we've right. got going on. That's still coming in low. Is this where the kids were? What were the names of the kids? So we don't have anything. We have to go up a standby people with the spirit boxes. That's what we should do. Do they have a spirit box? I think she has. A, uh, she has a spirit box. Fox? Yeah, fox? What did the fox say? Nothing. Okay. Nothing. No one cares.
nothing around you. What questions are you asking? Because you're kicking Stop. it off. Eliza, are you trying to tell me something? Eliza, make it go green again. Was she talking to you? Sure. She kept, it kept going off and then I said, when you came by, I said, Eliza, did something upset you? Make it go green again. Are you trying to tell me something? And then what? She Song? S-O-W. What is it? S-O-W. So. Song. You know the alphabet? Yes, okay. It's a G-B. It's saw. Saw. The word saw, the word jaws, the word fox, and. It sounds like a Dr. Seuss book, man. Right? Oh, no. Or like a children's book. Whoever this is, they have <laughs> It's been going off the whole time. I might have to turn it down a bit then. If it's giving us too much, I like to turn down the sensitivity yeah. so that it's way they're. Yeah, so this is working off of EMF fields. So basically, April's numbers that she's getting on the top, it's the same principle. When she sees a number, if she, they're standing in the same spot, he should have a letter. So it's any oh. kind of spike. They were, she was spiking the crap out of she before. Yeah. Yeah. She She kept asking. Yeah, I've only had that thing a month. Uh -huh. we got to talk about some equipment so we can do some of this ourselves. Oh, that's where you get a hold of me. Thank exactly. You. Or we can bring you out to us. We'll bring all of our staff together and do one of these personally. Did you, was it you that told me you had a place nearby? Where? Like where you live? No, we come out. We have clients in uh, North Carolina. Gotcha. I get a lot of people telling me about haunted places where they live. Oh, I have tons of haunted places in Utah where I live. Oh, that's right here in Utah. Oh, yeah. And in California, we have our other house. So there's tons. What'd you get? Anything interesting? So we could get a lot of church words, like saints and church. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our dad's name and... Oh, Are you up to 22 though? They're getting high. It was like 25 or 30 words. I know. 
which is unlikely. That is a great view of the car. on your camera? Nope, nothing unexpected. Yeah, 12 happened again. Huh? 12 what? I mean, it gets spikes. And it goes back down. You gotta be in your Andrew. I've been in your Oh, I got a beautiful picture of the car. With, with the EMF. It looks, it looks like that. It, it looks like it's gonna jump out of you. Okay, yeah, look. Look at that. Yeah. Hey, you're not helping the EMF. The EMF doesn't react to sexy. <laughs> Eliza. Let's rein it in. Let's come back to the back. All right. Do we have any water in the car? Damn it. Hurry, I had to get a new bag since I saw you guys last. What'd you get? Well, the last one was getting jammed full. Yeah. It was just packed tight, and I was afraid that that new Envoy that Andrew's using was going to break. So the wife hooked me up with this thing, and it's a giant. Like, what is it, OGO? Uh, it's a low pro. Camera gear. Oh, got it. But... Yeah, this one is way bigger than the last one. I keep upgrading everything. You should. If you ever gonna stop spending money, it's company money. What do you care? It's tax deduction. That's right. Every bit of it. All right. So none of you have really given me any terms from your communication devices, except for we have basically a Dr. Seuss book coming out of the, the Ouija board over there. We had like Jaws, Fox. Uh, what else did you get out of there? Saw. 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 Like just a bunch of weird terms that really don't make a whole lot of sense here. Um, the worst case scenario is if something else pops up and I'm going through the recording from Isabel, then hopefully something will match up. But at this point, nothing really matches up. We did hear the term classic rock that came through loud and clear. But again, she wasn't a geologist, she was a botanist. So again, that's the kind of mentality that we're looking for. What I am excited about are the two readings that April got on her device. I'm going to explain what those actually mean because we got similar readings from Isabel's device too. Um, in case you notice, we're one less again. You guys are dropping like flies on me. So, um, but what those readings actually mean, those devices are measuring electricity in the air. So if you were to put one of those devices behind your television set, you're going to see some numbers like 40 to 60 milligauss from April's device. That would mean that Isabel's device is going to max out because it only goes to 25. So it would go all the way to red. That's why they use those ones on TV because they're super low quality because they don't go very high. Now, the 12, the, we actually had a 12 and a 27 show up in a space with no electricity. Like, and then it went away right away. 12 down to zero, 27 down to zero. Like those are the types of spikes that we're looking for. So do we have anything else to kind of go along with that? Not necessarily. But to kind of show you dangerous levels of how that device actually works, 
if you're standing next to a microwave that's running with April's device, it's going to be about 150 to 170 milliamps. The highest I've ever seen that device go has been in this space at 214 milliamps. That's like putting your head inside the running microwave. Again, we left. I'm a guy with seizures. I'm not going to play with you. So again, that's going to affect me pretty quickly. We left that night. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, but again, 12 and 27, still nothing to sneeze at. So kind of take that forward. I'm just going to move my bag closer as people are passing through. By the way, those of you with cameras, feel free to stop them. So Annie, yours is going to be the button all the way to the right on top of the camera. You got yours, and then yours is the orange square. So just make sure you tap it and turn it into a circle. Quiet it. tonight. It is very, very quiet. Right? Just jumped. And we had the word horse. The St. Philip's Church. Because there's two different sides to the cemetery. The reason for that is because on the other side is if you're from Charleston and you're a native, you can get buried over there. If you're not a native, you get buried on the on the other side of the wall behind you. So they're over there because there is a sign right inside the gate that says there's no ghost here but the photo book. Tell him. Tell Nick. The legend for me at this point is that it's full. We have Wow. That's
that's good stuff. Hang on to that. Like, that's going to make a whole lot of sense. I'm going to have to explain it once I get through the actual history of the little building. Nice going. Wow. WC twice. That's crazy. Anyway, back to the picture. The picture for guys like Just me is gold, right? But it's cursed to females. This group is mostly females. Females and females are said to have If somebody, if I have a couple on my group here on our honeymoon, I don't want to be the guy who cursed their family nine months later. <laughs> so I do this for a living, guys. I take this very seriously. So I am going to show you the picture, and I will zoom in on the apparition so you guys get a chance to see it. Because uh, again, you're going to realize back in 1987 when you're taking photographs like this, like what the hell's going on there. So we start off with the history, and the opposite. So here's the full picture that he took. Oh, the apparition of the great here. Baby basket next to it. And that is super great. This is probably another instance. Put it on your thing. Probably buried. It's a good mom. spot. Because so, everybody else left. Don't touch it, Andrew. Yeah. She's looking at her back. She's praying over her own grave. You notice the baby basket. When you zoom in on this on the computer, you can actually see that it's the weaving of the basket. So, pick. When you zoom in, she's praying. Call you Spangler. It's a baby basket. Now, the husband's name was Gaston, so I've been looking for properties owned by Gaston to try to find out like where they lived and that kind of thing, so I can almost like have a leg up on where they're at. So, Did I get something where it's just stuck on the station? <laughs> it's spelled gawk -ga. Huh? gawk -ga. Gaga? gawk -ga. G O C. It's a new one. So, that's the crazy photo that they're showing off over there that's basically keeping them there for like 15 minutes or so. Gawk Why are we over here? What are, what are the letters you have before? Just gawk -ga. Well, letters. G O C G A. Yeah, I got nothing on that. G O C G A. Go C G A. Yeah, right. <laughs> Remember that. Is. All right. It's a new so paternity sorority for my time. We're going to talk about that little tiny building over there. That's the powder magazine. Those first off were not crosses on that building. Those are earthquake bolts. If you're not familiar with earthquake bolts because you've never taken a tour in Charleston, they're turnbuckles. If we have another earthquake like what we did in 1886, you can turn those turnbuckles and it's supposed to straighten the building back up again. It's a great theory, it just doesn't work. So the reason I bring them up is because it's the first set of earthquake bolts that they were put in here in Charleston because that's Glory. the oldest government that's building awesome. in South Carolina. So that's why we're here. Yeah, this is the same time frame as when Anne Bonny came to Charleston to start her new life. So again, this is what I call a familiar. It's like using a toy to attract a child ghost. It's the same principle. So Anne came here during the middle of its construction because this building took 10 years to build. Does that sound like our government? Small building, 10 years? No, not at all. But she came here in 1708. Follow me, there's a lot of twists on this one. And a young lady named Ann Cormack comes here in 1708. She's with her father and his mistress. The mistress is Ann's mother. Is everybody with me so far? The three of them are running away from his wife. So how angry was she that they left Ireland to come here? Just to point that out. They land in Georgetown, just north of here, at the Little Beach. Dad bought a plantation. Mom dies pretty quickly. So that means he has to send young Anne down here to sell anything to the plantation to keep things afloat. So, Whoa. Anne back home in Ireland was considered a badass. Let's say she actually killed one of her servants when she was only 10 or 12 years old with a knife to the belt. So, again, <laughs> just putting that mentality of this young lady in the back of all of your minds. Let's fast Wonder forward. Rain. The building is finished in 1713. It's crazy. Pirates are coming to town in 1715. Anne's going to fall in love because she wants freedom just like a man. So, Guy number one. Yes, we're going to keep tally. There's a hand. Guy number one turns out to be James Bonney. You can already see where this one's going because we've already mentioned the name Ann Bonney. But Dad didn't approve because he's a filthy pirate. They run away to Jamaica. They got married. Ann Bonney is now Ann Bonney. Got to see where that one went. But this is not Captain Jack Sparrow that she was hoping for. This guy was a privateer. He was a spy for the British. So a few years later, she falls in love again. Guy number two turns out to be John Rackham, a.k.a. Calico Jack. This is the real... Jack that they based your Captain Jack Sparrow character off of. So, Jack has his own ship. 
and he is the Captain Jack Sparrow, literally, that she was hoping for. She wants to be part of that ship, and he has. But you can't put a girl on the crew. Does anybody know why? Cursed. Cursed. Bad luck. You can't put a girl on the crew. A lot of people come up with other answers. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you guys can all use your imaginations on that one. Mm -hmm. No um, penis. He makes a deal with her to put her on the crew. If you dress like a guy and be part of the crew, you're going to be a female in my quarters. She's okay with this because Dad used to cross-dress her as a, as a boy apprentice back home in Ireland to hide her away from his wife. So she's like, whatever, it's a man's world, I'm a pirate, let's go. We're all adults here, let's put two and two together. Being a female in his quarters, she's eventually going to get pregnant. You can't have a pregnant pirate dude on the crew. Somebody's <laughs> going to figure out that she's a female, and then they're going to vote Jack off the ship. So, Jack Ship's drops her off in Cuba. Go have the baby over here. Well, that's later, dial, it's we'll indigo, it it's, not, it's not like D-I-E. It said gory and dye. D-Y-E and then gory. That's not dye. Yeah. That's dye. So, yes. where was I? Oh, having the baby. So, she goes and has the baby, but returns with no baby. She's also dressed like a female. By the way, no amount of research that I've been able to go through has been able to tell me what's going on with that child. Just so you guys know, I've read tons of books about this damn topic. When she returns, dressed like a female, this makes Jack pretty angry. He, while she was away, he captured another pirate crew. They're down below deck. So she's going to go flirting with that pirate crew to make him even more mad, because that's what Anne does. Guy number three, in case you guys lost track. Guy number three turns out to be a female, dressed like a guy to be part of the pirate crew the Calico Jack just captured. Her name is Mary Reed. She went by Mark Reed to become a pirate. So now we have two females dressed like males on the same ship. Her and Mary become friends, possibly lovers. We're never going to know for sure. But the British find out where they are. They send their entire fleet of ships to come take down. So they're looking for somebody. By the yeah, way. they are. No, that's what I was saying. There's too much activity. Yeah, there's way too much. And they only have, the I mean, they have almost no cars to be counted. Well, we had an alert earlier. Did anybody get that alert? No. Mm -hmm. There was an alert that basically said that there was an inmate loose coming out of the Monk's Corner area. That's about 35 miles inland from here, um, about five miles away from my home. So, of course, it was a matter of, like, lock all the doors, but I want to see what's going on outside. So, this is all. I texted the wife because she was out with my daughter. And uh, it's just kind of a weird thing. But yeah, we all got a text earlier. Kind of keep an eye out. I wonder if that's what's still going on. Uh, he would have made it down this far by now. Anyway. Forgot where the hell it was at. Cuba. Oh, yeah, Research. Yeah. No, no. Baby. So her and Lesbian lovers. Friends. The British find out where they are. They send an entire fleet of ships to come down and take down one pirate ship. Anne and Mary are the only two pirates not drunk enough to come up and fight. Probably because they don't know how to use the cannons yet. But they're using one bullet flint locks. Just so you know. Obviously, they're going to get taken, so you can't have two ladies trying to fight off a whole fleet of ships. As they're being arrested by the British, she looks at her captain, her bow, Calico Jack, and says, You should have fought like a man instead of being hanged like a dog. So the word dog does show up on the spear boxes quite a bit here. The judge, his name is Nick as well, so if you see, hear my name, it's him, not me. He wants to see the two men that fought back so valiantly what? by themselves. So the two ladies go in front, they reveal their gender. He doesn't care that they're female. He's still going to hang them because they're pirates. We plead our bellies was the last thing they said because you can't hang a pregnant woman in 1720. It's illegal. So it sends them both back to jail and delays the hanging. Dad is still here in the Charlestown area with all of his Irish money. He bails out Anne, brings her back home, and she remarries. That's husband or husband number two, but guy number four because we're going to count Mary Reed. As far as that goes, she had four kids and dies at the age of 84. Mary Reed died a year later, 1721, from whatever pirates die from in a Jamaican jail. Use your imagination. So, I'm sure it was scurvious and nasty and gross. Now, normally, I would say I left out two questions, but one of those questions has already been answered through the envoy. The name of Anne Bonnie's parents, I left out on purpose. And I usually have you spirit box folks try to find out what the name of her father was and his mistress. But the father's initials have already come through of WC coming through to us, <coughs> almost like take notice of me. His name was William Cormack. So, again, WC is very prominent here. I'm hoping that the name William is going to show up somewhere else more prominently, or the mother's name, which I'm not going to give you yet. The other question I left out is the name of Calico Jack's ship. So, ask away about Calico Jack's ship. We never know what answer is going to pop up, and it is a rare question that I get the answers to. April, with your device, I want you to focus on Anne Bonnie trying to show you her hair color. It's a very odd thing to see on that device because in order to get the color red, she has to touch it. The only time I've ever gotten the color red has been in the space when we've asked her. So again, reset. Um, those of you with cameras. That's your crazy redhead, so. That's part of the other reason why I gave it to you. Now, those of you with cameras, if you want to go to the front, which by the way, Annie, you're not recording at this point. This is dumb. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to go to the front of the powder magazine to get some footage up there and use the lasers in the front line, you can do that. The only thing I ask is you don't interrupt the other tours. 
if you wanted to go over to St. Philip Cemetery to get a little bit of footage of that sign in that cemetery behind it, you can do that. So again, we can spread out over here, um, but I'm going to be hanging out over there by that wall. But before we separate, I am going to tell you why I give you that heated warning at the top of the tour. I know you're very anxious to see what's going to go on this year. Like, I'm going to go walk around. Um, so. Back in September of last year, I brought my team back here just like this, and the kid next to me literally went white as a ghost. I had to pick him up by his armpit to be able to stop him from hitting his head on the ground. His boyfriend picks him up from the other side of him, and we get him over to that wall where he can go over and sit down. We get him a bottle of water. It was much cooler than this. It was September. So it was almost a year ago now, actually. But anyway, once we get him feeling better, I then tell them the story that I just told you about Ann Bonnie. So they don't know the story yet. After I spread everybody out with their devices, like I just did for you, they pull me aside and say, Nick, we have to tell you, we are two transgender males, meaning I had two females dressed as males, just like Anne and Mary in the story, and it made sense as to why one of them wasn't feeling well the minute we entered this space. Now, I will tell you, in this space, people have been prone to headaches, heart palpitations, um, and feeling a little woozy. Again, we're going to blame it on the crazy humidity, just because it is one of those things if anybody's feeling that way. So, we're going to spread out. I'm going to hang out over there by the wall, and then you guys are going to come back to me within the next five to eight minutes and tell me what you guys found, and we'll wrap up this party. Because Nikki wants to really use those lasers. You can see it all over her face. <laughs> so, again, if you want to uh, head over to the front of the powder magazine with the lasers, um, just be careful. Don't go above the lawn. There's apartments in the brick building behind it. You'll be shining on somebody's living area. All right, coming. everybody else, let's spread out. Let's have huh? some fun. The letters Q and G are reoccurring. You stay with April because you guys have the things. Anything on here? Really? Where's the word lady? It almost looks like dog. So you have like DQG. Oh. Word lady. Almost looks like dog. You're a word lady. Oh. Well, we said moving. Yeah, stop moving. Let's get you squared away too. You're moving. Hey, 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 Pac Man. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. Oh, it's going off again. Yeah. And you had it turned yeah. down already. She's active now. That's cool. Like that WC, that is, that's huge. Like those are... Twice. Yeah, that's what made me draw attention to it. Yeah. So again, whenever I hear something twice or see something twice, it's just like, ah, look at me, look at me. So, yeah, this was supposed to be like an overpacked group of 11. We kind of dropped off like flies. So what happened? Uh, first gentleman, before we even got started, wasn't feeling well. They went into Big John's for a drink. They oh. came out, not feeling well. The other lady, they both came out of Big John's. We left, we were, got to Pinkney Mansion site. She wasn't feeling well, decided she needed to sit out. Oh, so that's two people that went to Big John's that were not no. feeling well. So again, I'm, I can't blame it specifically on that, but again, two people out of the same place. Yeah. They all paid though, right? So, screw that. Made a choice. J is always prominent here, but it's a matter of what initial come was it comes with it. JR, John Reckham. Oh. <laughs> Your first was real just down there.
There's a couple of hot spots, like way hot spots inside there. Let's cross over where they were. I don't like being this far separated if there's an inmate out. Over here last time felt a little bit weird. Let's we'll see if they found anything. Oh, there's another tour there now. Back. Let's go, Ann. What color is the hair? Help out. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm a mess. You know this is all on film, right? So Nick is recording all this. <laughs> You're a mess. Look at Andrew over there. I wish I could scare the shit out of him. So we see something. How many words are we at? Sixty-two. How much? Sixty-two. Huh. Slowed down a lot. I was gonna scare the shit out of you. What'd you get? P. Did you get my name? P and D. I were both double num double letters right next to each other, and I got Y. I got W, X, and Y going straight down in a three-second burst. Oh, yeah, like, I could just be fucking with you. X, That's Z, another. Do it again. It went to Y. It went W, X, Y, and then no Z, and then I was X. If you just get Z, somebody's fucking with you. Andrew's ghost is talkative. But I'm tired. But awake. I said I'm tired, but awake. He didn't get it. Mm -hmm. So, a couple of things I'm pretty excited about. So, first off, Isabel.